be out here, be out here in this 20 degree weather, in the snow. This is fine. <laughs> I mean, it's really pretty. I did feed the birds. They're yelling at me because I'm out here right now. Hey, what's up humans? My name is Kira McGran. I'm a queer cyborg game designer in Columbus, Ohio. I just got back from a week um, in Guatemala, <laughs> in Santiago, Atitlan, which is uh, like this beautiful um, town that has a lot of indigenous Mayan people still living there, uh, wearing traditional clothing, eating traditional food, um, around a lake with three volcanoes. Three volcanoes. And now I'm back in Columbus, Ohio, and it feels like negative 20 degrees here in the polar vortex. It's fine. <laughs> Have a bit of a cold, so bear with me. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, accessibility um, for people with disabilities at conventions, um, because it's something that was on my mind a lot this past week um, in Guatemala. It was a gaming retreat. Uh, my friend Garrett um, online, who is part of the Gauntlet um, community, kind of organized this because he and his wife uh, and his child lived down there um, and invited us to come. It was a small like convention. It wasn't really a convention. It was more of a gathering um, of gamer people uh, who wanted to go to Guatemala. And um, I think that there's a lot uh, that can benefit people with disabilities at convention or game spaces like this. Specifically with my type of disability and chronic pain, um, which uh, is fibromyalgia, right? So often now at game conventions, it's really hard for me to participate in a lot of the game sessions because my pain is amplified by sitting still for long periods of time. So like working from home really benefits me because I can move around and get up whenever I need to. I don't have to stay stationary if I'm feeling icky and I try to get up and move as often as possible, right? So that's harder to do in an office environment or in other work environments. It's the same at game conventions. A lot of game slots are two to four hours long. Two hours is a little bit better for me to sit at a table hunched forward, you know, maybe shouting across a loud table in a loud room. Um, but, uh, you know, the four hour ones are pretty nigh on unbearable anymore. It's just something that, you know, with my current body status, I can't really do as much anymore. And so this past year, um, at conventions that were kind of more mixed media in nature, um, I had more luck with my pain. So it's not like a 100% we're sitting down and gaming all the time, but maybe it is tabletop plus LARP plus outdoors, um, which is kind of like what Big Bad Con is, or um, which, which outdoors is optional, there's nothing scheduled, or um, the Neo Retro Con that I went to in Rhode Island that had like a synthwave music festival in tandem with like tabletop and video gaming. Um, so the activities were all scheduled at that convention for all those things and you could I could kind of like chill in the tabletop room and, and you know I was selling, helping sell games, run games, um, or I could go you know dancing at the Synthwave Festival at night which would get my body moving again. I could kind of walk around the town. All of that really helped to manage my chronic pain. This game retreat in Guatemala that I just came from was the perfect combination of things because uh, in the way that the schedule worked, um, everything was fronted in the morning to kind of take advantage of the daylight outside and also some things that you could only see in the morning like a sunrise or like birds um, and stuff like that. So activities ranged from like five in the morning to noon and then gaming happened from like 2 p.m to 11 if you were feeling up to it. <laughs> um, but this was cool because, um, you know, when I did all the physical activity in the morning, my body was then ready to kind of sit and chill in the evening. Um, and it helped manage my chronic pain in a way that the opposite of that, like gaming in the morning and then like maybe hanging out and drinking at night, 
does not. Like the drinking at night, hanging out later, just totally messes up my body. Um, so that was interesting to learn. <laughs> like, it, uh, you know, if conventions were scheduled that way, if we, you know, it's a cultural issue generally. Um, you know, people like to hang out at night. Um, but if we were able to be active in the morning and then maybe uh, chill in the afternoon with some gaming, I think that would be perfect for my fibromyalgia. And I bet a lot of other people with similar chronic pain issues. We also had really healthy food that we were eating the whole time, local fresh vegetables and fruits and corn tortillas. Uh, you know, all of that kind of helped manage uh, usually the higher pain levels of pain that I feel at game conventions. So I'm just kind of like, you know, sitting around all day, maybe hunched over, um, you know, stationary most of the time, maybe not eating the best food because it's hard to find good food um, at restaurants and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, staying up late or drinking um, or things like that in the evening and just not getting activity. So I think in the future, I'm going to try to to like make this happen somehow, <laughs> like physical activity in the morning to kind of help with my chronic pain the rest of the day. Just thought it'd be interesting to share some of those uh, tips and trick that, tricks I learned recently about managing my chronic pain at conventions. How do you manage your chronic pain at conventions um, or potentially your fibromyalgia or your disability? The disabilities that people deal with physically are a huge range and a huge umbrella. And trying to create a convention schedule that could cater to all of them takes a lot of work. And it'd be cool to see more of that integrated into schedules, like perhaps physical activities or resting times um, or the ability to access better food maybe not staying up late, maybe fronting things in the morning, um, things like that that could help people like me with our chronic pain. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, keep an eye out. I might put up a Guatemala vid if I can ever get these videos off my camera. And I will see you in my next video.